So uh, here's a, a continuation of the tire tutorial. What we're going to do here is create the rim that you see here. We're going to use Flowify also to do that. So first, uh, here's where we left off last time with our tire um, uh, that, that we created. And there's a, a YouTube video on how to do that if you haven't seen it. So let's start off. We'll create a, uh, our little, uh, basically, our uh, control, our, our template components. Um, and we're updating our scene so we can we know that when we click on right, we'll see the whole, way, the whole thing. So now, first thing I want to do is, is I'm going to create an interior rim. And this is pretty much a, we're calling this a, this center line. Uh, we'll create this interior rim. Uh, and this interior rim is really not a part of the Flowify process. All it is, it's a, it's kind of a, uh, a piece that is going to be completely uh, uh, cylindrical. In terms of profile, we'll lay that or, or use the follow me tool to, to build that. Um, put a little uh, relief in here, uh, add some radiuses, and uh, erase out the other geometry that we don't need, of course, and use follow me and get that to where we think it's going to work. So there it is, reverse the faces. Uh, and that's that interior rim that we were just talking about. So let's call that rim one. Uh, and then we're going to have to build the spokes for this wheel. Um, and uh, uh, so what we'll have to do is we're gonna generate a little plane under here that we can use as a reference for the spokes. So use that, scale it uh, to where we can, you know, where the spokes are going to be and uh, group it. And we're going to hide the rest of the model. And now we're going to actually, actually, or actually, we, should, we showed it so we can actually uh, see as we're, we're working with it, we can see what how it's going to fit in here. So, this is basically what we drew. I, I cut out a couple of steps here, but we drew this and we created a curve using Curve Wizard. And we've added uh, a number of poly segments because we want to increase the geometry. We want to increase because it's a smooth curve, we want to increase it as much as possible. The only problem is when we use this. You can see that when we get into here, we don't have quads. And remember that that uh, that we need quads for Flowify, so that doesn't work. So we're going to, have to go back into here, and we right-click on this particular curve, um, and we can use Frito tools remove lonely vertices. So that's going to remove any collinear vertices along this curve, which is real important. So notice that it's uh, we're as eleven of them that they're going to remove. It's removed them now. If I do a follow a follow me around this particular polygon, we're going to see that we don't have any of the problems that we had previously, which was uh, uh, non quads. We'll be able to generate a full quad. Here we go. There's a full full set of quads. So uh, let's go ahead and delete this out. Review it. So as you look at it now, these are all quads. This is exactly what we want uh, for our surface for the spokes. Now we got to come in, and as we previously did in the, in the tire tutorial, we're going to have to offset our, uh, our our boundary, our surface. So basically, this is the flowify surface that we're creating. That we're going to that we're going to flow our, our spokes onto. We have to offset it by one. Make sure that we get the normals correct. So once we get this done, um, I'm looking at this now and thinking that I need to go in deeper. So I'm going to go in and grab a few of these polygons. And I'll use vertex tools. Uh, it's just easy for me to do that. You can also move it probably with the with the uh, move tool, but then you're going to be snapping all kinds of things. Nice thing about vertex tools, you don't worry about that. So here I positioned that surface, the, the Flowify main surface, the surface that we're going to Flowify on. And here's the uh, uh, the grid surface that we're going to actually create our spokes on. I'm moving it around, getting it to where I want it. I'm going to actually pull this out a little bit. I want it to be a little bit deeper than what I had uh, originally created. Now I hook up uh, the Flowify lines, group those. Now I have three groups, group all of that, and we'll name that the Flowify group. And we can check it by just basically going under the extensions and say impose grid. And when we do that, if it imposes a grid, we know that everything's working right. Now I'm drawing again a surface 10 units high. That's the surface that I'm going to use for building the spokes. Um, remember, we, we keep one row off on the right and one row, or one column off on the right, one column off on the left. Here I'm going to go up seven units. I'm going to start my spokes at seven units. Okay, uh, I'm going to group this and start drawing spokes uh, on top of this group. 
So we'll just go in here, draw a center line off, we'll draw you know, something to start with, just see what it looks like. I'll mirror this, this surface, delete that center line, uh, make that a component, and then we'll set it over here on the left. We're going to duplicate it five times because we want five spokes, and we're going to delete out every other spoke. So now we have two and a half on this side, two and a half on the other side. So we're going to put these in here, explode these onto this, and we're going to basically take this and uh, flowify it directly to the surface. Now I'm gonna, I can see now what's going to happen. I'm looking at the spokes and I'm thinking they're a little bit too broad on the edge there. If you, uh, they, uh, they flower out a little too much, expand out a little too much. I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to have to tweak that. So uh, and that's the reason why I kind of kept those components before so I can back on out of this. And here there are components. So I can go into one component and I'm going to uh, start by resizing actually just the uh, uh, this segment using again vertex tools to do that there we go the bends so I'm making them a little bit narrower then I'm gonna uh, expand uh, the choke right there and then I'm gonna take the whole thing and resize it completely so now I've got uh, all of these now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing take those component explode them on top of that surface clean it up a little bit get rid of the straight lines uh, and this time i uh, got a little input error because I need everything. it's just too simple of geometry, so I'm going to go ahead and delete these out. Now I'll go in and do the same thing, do a flowify. And here we'll see this time, yeah, this looks more like what I'm looking for. I like the thickness of those spokes in terms of the, the, the width, profile width. I'm not so sure. I think they're, they're too deep in the Z dimension. They're a little too deep, so we'll, we'll fix that here in a second. But I do like the shape, so I'm going to go back in now, and uh, I'm going to... Uh, basically go back to the origins. I'm going to start modifying these. This is the component. We're still in the components layer. Um, and I'll start adding some little uh, fillets to them. And again, punch the, uh, explode them on top of the actual geometry. Clean them up. Punch, punch through the parts that we don't need. And now I think we're starting to, to make some progress. Uh, again, I'll you know, flow flies fast enough, I can look at it and go, yep, that looks about what I want. I want to see how I'm going to fill at these inside corners, how much they needed uh, at the, where the spokes meet uh, the center area. So I'll come in here to the fillet. I'm going to use, uh, uh, I think I'm going to use 4 uh, and 10. And that looks pretty good. Everything's, uh, solid inspector says everything works. So let's go in here, clean this up. Uh, once this is cleaned up, we're going to put we're going to put some interior spokes. I think I'm going to use uh, componentize this very similar process. Take these components. We'll do ten of these guys, uh, and we'll go into the component again, uh, resize it until we get something we like. Then uh, uh, add some radiuses to it. You know, three only three segments. Don't need to be a lot on this. We're going to shift them down maybe what, seven units. And then I'm going to add some draft angle to them. So I'll, I'll add draft angle to all these. Okay, and then once that's done, I can come in here and um, uh, I'm going to need to, uh, actually, this was a, this, uh, uh, I'm going to need to subtract these from the actual, uh, the main system. So that's what I'm doing here. I could do it all. Actually, I could have just done, put them all in one group and subtract them, but that's right, I'm getting this done. So it's done this way. So uh, I can flowify that, take a look at it and see what I like, see what, yep, I think that works pretty good. It doesn't go all the way through, but the, because of the draft angle, you can see them quite nicely. Uh, makes them more apparent. So now I'm gonna take this surface, I'm gonna add some radiuses, but I don't want a consistent radius on this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise it, make it thicker, and then I'll select these, uh, select these areas here. Using the Select Curve tool, I'm gonna fill it, and I'm not going to make it 10 set, I'll make it 5, and we'll make it 5 uh, number of segments. And you can see that that's what, we, that's what we ended up with, and then we'll take this and we'll shrink it down quite a bit. So that's, that's a very interesting kind of a fillet, a fillet. It goes, it's flatter across the top. Then uh, you can see this is the flowified version of it. it looks pretty good. Um, I'm doing a little bit of this. Uh, smooth edges on it to see how that's going to pan out. And once I've got that done, I want to actually put some fillets in the uh, bottom of each one of these these groups. 
we'll set that up at about what two, and then we got to manually do these edge, uh, the edges on the end. And it turns out that using it inside Frida's tool sometimes it doesn't get everything, so I'm just gonna go back and get them directly uh, using the select curve command here, both sides. Okay, good now. Okay, so now we pretty much have uh, our finished uh, surface that we're going to flowify. Uh, there it is. Let's go ahead and look at it. Now the next step we want to do is I need to basically uh, set these up so that uh, because I can't, the soft and smooth edges won't give me what I want in terms of creating geometry that's renderable in something like Keyshot or high-end rendering program. So uh, uh, I'm going to need to convert a lot of these polygons into groups and then separate the groups out, and then I can then I can collapse all of the groups at one time. Uh, and so that's kind of what I'm doing here. So you'll see that I'm using the soft smooth to, to, to select different things, like what I'm doing here, selecting all these areas. And I'm grouping them, and then I'm hiding them. And then I'll go get to the next, uh, the next group uh, again, and uh, selecting, uh, grouping them, and then hiding them. And I'll keep doing this as I do this, uh, for a little while here, uh, what the, the, the deal is is that uh, that you really want to be sure that you're not getting too much in the way. It, you, know, you need to have your your soft edges only in certain places on a model like this for it to render properly in a high end renderer. And so, as you can see, I'm basically going through and and grouping as much of the 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 co the coplanar geometry as I can. And so it just leaves this other kind of uh, uh, soft, the softer geometry. And that's what this is right here. So I'm going to select, hide, well, let's hide all these, group those, hide them, and then take this and make sure we get the angle correct on all these. So we just go through and and soften all of those. And now I can basically start to ungroup the rest of the stuff that's on here. Actually. Uh, I forgot to smooth that, that surface there. Now, now I ungroup it all. So now I actually have some nice geometry, even though everything's ungrouped. Uh, it's been exploded right now. Everything's exploded. It has the right hard edges for it to render properly. So it looks pretty good. Next thing to do, we'll just need to move it in and out of the uh, uh, with the actual rim, uh, the first rim that we created. And once we get that done, we're going to uh, show the tire, and now we have to scale the tire around it uh, and get it so that it's about right. And there we go. And then I want to go ahead and take, uh, try and uh, <laughs> try and use the scale tool here, which as everybody knows is a pain in the neck because it's always trying to snap to something. So finally, I decided after <laughs> after trying this for too many, too much time, I decided to just use a uh, 0.8 percentage and just stay, stay with that. So here's my tire. Let's just go ahead and launch uh, the key, uh, key shop plugin, load the tire in. We'll look at it and, and as we start putting materials on it and everything, I'm starting to look at it, I'm realizing that wow that rim is really big, I'm thick on there and I don't like the way that looks. So sometimes it's interesting that you have to actually look at it rendered before you can really understand what how those services are going to be treated. Um, so uh, I'm adding some some tiny edges on there, but I think what I'll do is I'll go back into SketchUp and, and fix that. So I'll come in here uh, and select just these faces here uh, that I know that I'm going to want to move. So I'll go in here and click these different, uh, these different curves. Uh, and again, Vertex Tools is great for this kind of thing. Uh, again, you don't have to worry about when you, the snap. It's not a problem when you do that. Now, go back into KeyShot and there's my Tire, and you can see I can put different materials on it, just colors on the materials, uh, find something that's going to work. Um, and uh, really uh, uh, play around with the lighting. That's about it. So, this is kind of an interesting challenge to try and figure out how do you build something like this. Uh, obviously, you could use something like Artisan to do the same thing, probably, uh, but it may not be as detailed as this. Uh, so, uh, this is the uh, final render. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching.